expect the economy will continue to perform well. We expect that job conditions will strengthen somewhat further. We expect overall inflation to rise to 2% over the next couple of years. I'm not going to offer the incoming president advice about how to um, conduct himself in policy. Um, I'm a strong believer in the independence of the Fed. I might or might not be reappointed. For the second time in a decade, the world's most powerful central bank has bit the bullet and hiked interest rates by a quarter percent. Good evening and welcome to this special show, Fed Watch. I'm Lata Venkatesh and with me, Surabhi Upadhyay. Well, hi, Lata. Uh, the US Federal Reserve has hiked rates by 25 basis points. This is the first rate hike in 12 months and markets were not really spooked as the hike was very much on expected lines. The Fed commentary bought... Uh, well, uh, perhaps a little more to debate about because instead of the expectations of two hikes uh, in the year 2017, the expectations now stand at three hikes. Lata. Well, that's right. Uh, the Fed did scale up its growth forecast by just a notch. Not just that, uh, it also revised uh, its unemployment forecast a little lower. And uh, therefore, the question, uh, is this going to be a series of uh, rate hikes? And also, is this a good rate hike? Does it have some resemblance to Greenspan's hike in 2003 and his famous statement, uh, uh, you know, uh, accommodation will be removed at a modest pace? Uh, and that led, or at, that, at least that was followed by a period of unprecedented growth across continents. Well, joining us to discuss that big question uh, further is Martin Wolf uh, from the Financial Times, uh, the veteran commentator and observer of global financial markets. Mr. Wolf, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, that really is uh, the first question we want to ask you. Because the Yellen press conference spoke of uh, uh, something positive, slightly better growth for the U.S. economy in 2017, slightly lower unemployment in 2017, should we think that this rate hike actually is acknowledging growth and therefore not a bad thing? Well, if they're right that the economy will be stronger, that's a very good thing. Uh, and we hope very much that that will be the case. Uh, whether the, the rate hike was necessary at this stage, I think, is, is quite controversial. I think there is an argument to be made that there's no real sign of inflation. Uh, the economy has had a long period of still pretty modest growth. Productivity growth has been very low. There might well be more growth potential in the economy than this rate hike suggests, and that running the economy hot, as it were, is a risk worth taking. But it's not something I feel very strongly about. It's a very small increase. Rates are still very low. Uh, so I think one, one shouldn't take a very strong view on whether this particular rate hike was a good idea or not. The more important question is, will we expect, should we expect, there will be the three further hikes that they have indicated next year. And on that, I would suggest on past performance, we should wait and see, because they've indicated that sort of thing before, and in the end, it hasn't happened. Mr. Wolf, uh, will 2017 be a year when economic stimulus, at least in the U.S., shifts from monetary stimulus, perhaps, to more fiscal stimulus, as the Trump administration perhaps looks at tax cuts? And if that's going to be the case, is it going to be good for GDP growth? Well, I think th that is what one must expect, that there will be a large... Uh, tax cut, there will be some increase in spending on infrastructure, the how much of that will happen next year and how much effect that will have on the economy is at present completely uncertain. It is also uncertain how much of uh, the tax cuts will actually be spent because a lot of the tax cuts seem likely to go to the very wealthy, a very large part of that might be saved. But despite these uncertainties, it is probable that there will be a pretty large tax cut. That means 
uh, very much as happened under George W. Bush in the early 2000s. That would mean that fiscal policy will play a bigger role, and that makes it more likely than it would have been if Hillary Clinton had won, that interest rates will rise. And so we will see a rebalancing from monetary to fiscal policy, and that will probably also mean, uh, and indeed has already meant, uh, uh, higher long-term interest rates, we've seen that happen, and a higher dollar. So we are seeing quite a big repricing of major assets in the world as a result of the expectation of the shift to fiscal from monetary policy. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wolf, how would you see 2017 playing out? Uh, are you going to see a lot more of the short EM long developed markets trade? Well, I, I think it's very likely that we will continue to see, unless there's something very big happens, uh, a long dollar trade. That is to say, uh, the set of policies we're now seeing, uh, looser fiscal policy, tighter monetary policy, with the American economy already the strongest developed economy, is very bullish for the dollar. Uh, it's, for, it's bullish for a U.S. Of real assets. It's bearish, of course, for long bonds denominated in dollars, and that is likely to mean that most other currencies will remain weak against the dollar. But that is not just emerging market economies, it's also been developed country economies, uh, and the yen has been one of the weaker country currencies. So, uh, but I think we are seeing, as a result of this big change in dollar markets mm. and policy in the U.S., a pretty major shift in asset markets worldwide. Uh, well, Mr. Wolf, last time around, December 2015, when this rate hike happened and dollar strengthened, uh, we got trouble from renminbi that big devaluation scare and all of january and half of february uh, washed out uh, in fears of recession where might the red flags emerge now this is always very difficult uh, to tell uh, i think the concerns about the renminbi could return uh, the underlying basic balance of payments in the uh, the Chinese renminbi is very unfavorable. There's a huge capital outflow, and the, they're using up reserves, so it's quite possible that we will get pressure again there. We could get pressure in other emerging economies where there's a lot of U.S. dollar debt, including particularly dollar debt in the corporate sector, which could then possibly affect corporate solvency, and then that could affect the banking sector. If that happens in important economies, then that could create quite considerable turbulence. I can't, don't think one can even rule out some instability even in India. Well, speaking of India, so if you would elaborate on that point, uh what impact will the strong dollar uh, trade have on flows into emerging markets like India? Well, I'm assuming India, of course, is a very good story. So people basically have confidence in India, and I wouldn't forecast any enormous problems. But yes, I expect generally that this is going to lead to a flow out of uh, emerging economies and many developed countries to the U.S., rising dollar, rising current account deficit in the U.S., and that is going to squeeze those who have borrowed a great deal in dollars, uh, mostly now in the private sector, and uh, that could start giving some bad stories, some bad corporate stories. Uh, I don't know enough about the details, and that could emerge. But I'm generally, I remain rather bullish about India. I expect it to do well. But in a huge repricing like this, we can see difficulties emerge in the most surprising places. Well, this is a Fed watch uh, show, but uh, I can't uh, resist uh, from asking you about what you made of India's demonetization. Well, I'm afraid I thought it, I mean, I do apologize for this, but I thought it was a total shambles. I don't believe it's the right way to conduct policy to create so much uncertainty about the future value of the currency. I'm particularly shocked that as far as I can see, 
the the policy was carried out without having already printed enough of the new notes to replace the old ones, thus creating a situation in a highly cash-dependent economy that for many people it was very difficult to get hold of the cash which they depend on for their livelihoods. So I understand why the government did it. I understand the concern about the black economy, but this seemed to me a very brutal tool, and I am concerned that it will undermine confidence in policy making in India and undermine confidence in the currency itself, which is the basis, of course, still of economic transactions. So I must say I'm one of those outside observers who was rather puzzled by what happened. Well, there are, of course, a growing tribe of people like you, uh, Mr. Wolf. But uh, to come back to our uh, Fed uh, worries, uh, is it uh, not possible that as the dollar strengthens, and if we take the DXY as an index, if it goes from strength to strength from 103 closer to 110, uh, that might start hurting the uh, U.S. Uh, growth story itself. And therefore, we might see a very different uh, set of rate hikes and uh, very different reaction from Mr. Trump as well. Well, I think it is correct that uh, very important that the rise in the dollar and the fall in bond prices, the rise therefore in bond yields, are themselves contractionary changes. So they are disinflationary and contractionary. And that is one reason why one could reasonably question whether it made sense actually to raise interest rates. And for that reason, I myself would have favored not raising rates now. And for the same reason, it makes it more plausible that they will not carry through in the end their intentions as announced to raise rates further. I think it is an important point that what is already happening in the markets, has happened in the markets, has already delivered an important tightening. However, I don't expect that to derail the growth in the American economy uh, on the basis of what has happened so far. Relatively modest dollar appreciation uh, by comparison, for instance, what, with what happened in the early 1980s. Relatively modest rises in long-term bond yields, which are still relatively low. I don't think they're going to stop U.S. growth altogether, I, certainly not in the near term, and particularly if there is a big fiscal stimulus. But I do think that what has happened is enough to make it sensible for the Fed to ask itself, do we need to raise rates as well, mm. given the tightening that is already happening? In the long term, which I mean is not next year, I do fear there will be a large rise in the U.S. current account deficit as a result of this combination of new policies that will create bigger protectionist pressures, possibly protectionist action. That's very much what happened in the early 80s mm. when the Reagan-Volcker policies, which was a very extreme version of what we need now see, fiscal deficits and tight monetary policy, led to a huge appreciation of the dollar and huge protectionism. But I think those risks are in the longer term, not next year. So very quickly, last question, as you look at 2017, if you could just rank asset classes, asset markets, in terms of what will be the strongest, uh, whether it's U.S. equities, bonds, the dollar you've mentioned, just a quick ranking for us. Very difficult. I try to avoid this. But it seems to me that equities are going to do relatively well if Mr. Trump is successful in reigniting growth. I think it's a growth story for the U.S., which is a growth story for the world. I think bonds look pretty bad uh, because they're already so fantastically expensive, very vulnerable to any expectations of tightening of monetary policy in the world, and I think that's more likely now. So bond yields could rise pretty well everywhere so they look really uh, really pretty bad for me and of course interest sensitive sectors property and so forth could well be adversely affected by mm. that uh, so I like equities most and that indeed is what the equity markets are showing well that's the bulk of our viewers those who like equity so they're going to uh, like the sound of what you are seeing mr. Martin Wolf always a pleasure speaking with you thank you very much for joining us well, a quick break on that note. On the other side, we have Nick Parsons of National Australia Bank and Alvin Tan of SoftGen joining us to talk about two other aspects of the Fed rate hike and what it means for the emerging market world.